my beloved book here. Published in the ancient year of 2019, Minecraft Game Design by Jens Bergenstein, aka The Green Book, is full of divine, I mean design, principles to guide the development of Minecraft and ensure it never reaches its fullest potential of adding everything that everyone always wants it to add, like enderite, guns, and dyed planks. I've wielded the information from it to great effect, destroying every single creative mod that ever added a hostile animal or a mining hammer. My army of vanilla plusians has devastated the modding community and forced everyone to make vanilla style mods for the lazy developers at Mojang to steal. But recently, I've become aware of a new jib book, thanks to the infamous leaker, Roger Badgerman, who posted the pages on Twitter before getting copyright struck. I was only able to obtain them because I have notifications turned on and could download them all before they were removed. This one has some extra design principles, as well as some super secret pages about Minecraft lore. Poisonous potatoes must never have a use. No update to the game, under any circumstances, should give the poisonous potato a unique purpose. It was added to nerf potato farming and automation, but it has since grown into a reminder to developers and players alike that not everything needs to have a use. We must remember that Minecraft is primarily a game to be enjoyed, not an equation to be solved. Technical players may choose to play this way, but we should also strive to cater to those who play the game casually. Animals like foxes and pandas may not be useful outside of extremely niche cases, but they provide the game with atmosphere and charm. Releasing a feature and expanding on it later naturally allows for much more creative freedom than aiming for perfection from the onset. The most important principle first, I like it. Honestly, the poisonous potato is too iconic to change. Some of you think it isn't useless, since it gives poison, but that's only 40% of the time and it's much easier to get from other sources. Others have said it counts to the advancement of eating every single type of food, and since it's a challenge advancement it gives XP, thereby making it useful. But again, XP is easier to get from other sources. However, some mods give it a unique purpose. Quark allows you to feed it to baby animals to stunt their growth, and Create allows you to use it as ammo for their potato cannon. Yep, you heard me. Quark and Create are not vanilla plus, which means you have to stop using them right now. This book says so. Only one dragon. The official release of Minecraft was marked by the arrival of the end and the dragon that guards its exit. Its uniqueness provides a stark contrast to the rest of the game's content, making it an iconic mob. Keeping this in mind, we should avoid borrowing its traits when designing new mobs. The level of detail on its model, especially its feet, is justified by both its large size and its status as a boss. Respect the block grid. Minecraft's environment is comprised of blocks, and this simplicity is part of its appeal. While some blocks may be more detailed, such as doors, ladders, slabs and stairs, we must make sure any new detail blocks do not obscure this grid. Vertical slabs are a popular request, but have the potential to overcomplicate both the visuals and gameplay of building. Adding horizontal slabs may even have been too much. Existing blocks can allow for more possibilities, like trapdoors being used as skirting boards. New blocks can take inspiration from these accidental discoveries, instead of going for the obvious solution. Minecraft is family friendly. A wide range of ages play this game, including many children. As such, we must always be mindful of how to protect them and depictions of children in the Minecraft universe. This has influenced many design decisions in the past. It is the reason why breeding is depicted as kissing, why baby animals do not drop XP on death, and why illager raiders will not attack villager children. We don't want to raise the rating of the game and lock out younger players from enjoying the new updates, so features like guns and realistic breeding animations will never be added. Don't lock the players out. On multiplayer servers, destruction is always a possibility, but this destruction must never prevent players from completing the core progression. End portal frames are unbreakable for this reason, so that the end cannot be cut off from the overworld on the whim of a dedicated griefer. This is not a problem for nether portals, as obsidian is plentiful, as are the ingredients for flint and steel. Mob D from the 2017 mob vote would have fixed the blaze spawners violation of this principle, as they can be destroyed to remove the renewability of blaze powder and eyes of ender by extension. Mob D would have spawned randomly throughout the nether, and dropped blaze powder when killed. Since it was voted out, and lost forever, we can design new creative ways to solve this long-standing violation. Wikis are optional. Discovery is a large part of Minecraft. 
It fostered a curious community eager to share their knowledge and motivates people to explore. However, for more casual players, catching up on all this information can be a significant hurdle. We added the recipe book in the World of Colour update for this reason, but we can continue to make the game more accessible for new players. Ideally, a player should be able to complete the game without needing to consult external sources. The main challenge is to communicate the steps a player needs to follow in an immersive yet clear manner. Features like Ruined Portals and the Advancement System are prime examples of how this is being done already. Alright, that was all the pages on design principles, now I've got some secret lore. Cats are lethally cute. Cats are quite curious creatures in Minecraft. The creeper, so hellbent on destruction, will avoid them at all costs. The phantom, an undead monster manifested from the insanity of a sleep deprived player, will flee from them, though not always successfully, as a cat has a chance to gift a phantom membrane to a sleeping player. Why are cats so feared? Well, they are the only animal that hisses back at a creeper, signalling they are not to be trifled with. Whether this is a bluff or not is up to our players to decide. Phantoms are attracted to players who haven't slept for several days. In the same vein, they are repelled by cats who sleep all the time. In fact, when cats sleep, they enter the dimension that phantoms originate from, allowing them to hunt even when there are no insomniacs around. This is how they obtain the membranes they later gift to the player. Rivalries are not personal. The various conflicts in the Minecraft world may seem ancient and heated, however, many exist for practical purposes. Guardians attack squids, for example, to obtain ink sacs they can use to craft Dark Prismarine and repair the monument. Piglins attack with the skeletons for their bones, to bone meal the various nether fungi and spread their ecological influence. Endermen are very prevalent in the nether as they require blaze rods for their cities and gas tears to craft crystals to heal or respawn their ender dragon. Of course, none of this happens in game as the player is the focus of the world, but canonically, these are the reasons behind some of the more prevalent wars in Minecraft. Villagers are anarcho communist. Villager society doesn't map neatly over to reality, but in their natural state, they most closely resemble a communist society without hierarchy. They have emeralds as their currency, but this is only used for trading with the player. They freely share food with each other without expecting compensation. Additionally, they only need food to reproduce, and as such are not compelled to work, though will happily take up an available profession, unless they are nitwits who primarily focus on raising villager children. It is the players who decide what sort of society they will turn the village into, whether they treat them as equals or influence their trades through zombification and raids. Mineshafts are altars. Commonly believed to be underground structures created to assist with mining, these so-called abandoned mineshafts are actually altars built to worship various deities. Why else would there be plenty of ore left in them? The purpose of the minecart tracks was to induce an altered state of consciousness from the people who ride them back and forth, allowing them to commune with divine beings. Cave spider venom also assisted in inducing this effect. The gods worshipped there were believed to be present near the bottom of the world, unlike many popular religions in real life. This is why they are only found deep underground, save for the ones found in the Badlands. Those ones were built by illagers, and were to be used for mining gold. Unfortunately, illagers do not know what gold ore looks like, so they instead trade for gold ingots with piglins, in exchange for items like iron nuggets and water bottles. Pyramids are natural. A lot of popular theories about Minecraft's lore postulate that a singular group of ancient builders created all the structures considered uninhabited. This is true, except in the case of the desert and jungle pyramids. These were both naturally formed through erosion and deposition of stone from rainwater. This also applies to the traps and loot present in these pyramids, but exactly how, we will leave up to the player's imagination. Interestingly, desert whales were also formed through this process on a smaller scale, creating a shape that is able to capture and retain the rainwater. On the other hand, all fossils in the overworld and nether were placed there by a group known as the Not-So-Ancient Builders. They went extinct just before the player enters the world for the first time. Monuments are Muslim. During the development cycle of the Bountiful update, Notch decided to treat us to an all-expenses-paid trip around the Middle East. It served as a great source of inspiration for the update, and I learned a lot about the Islamic faith. The most evident example is the Ocean Monument. It sits on 23 pillars, one pillar for each year it took for the Quran to be dictated from Allah to Muhammad. The first verses of the Quran are also believed to have been revealed on the 23rd night of the Islamic month of Ramadan. 
The cubes of dark prismarine that contain gold were inspired by the Kaaba, which is located in the Great Mosque of Mecca. Skulk is poop. There have been many theories as to what Skulk is made from. It's not a mushroom, nor a fungus, nor mold, or even a symbiote. It is quite simply, poop. This may not be obvious at first, as no mobs actually have any orifices for excrement. The only hint towards the fact that they can defecate is the fact that they can drop experience orbs on death. Except for baby animals, since babies do not poop. The Skulk Catalyst allows dying mobs to release the feces they have been holding in for their entire lives, so they can die in peace and not in eternal constipation. Wardens would more appropriately be named janitors, as they live in the ancient restrooms and assist any mob they can hear with gaining that much needed relief. Alright, so that was all the official lore from the book that I was able to find, and now I've just got two more pages about anecdotes. Beetroots. When developing the Pocket Edition version of Minecraft for the Xperia Play, we encountered a graphical hardware limitation with rendering red non-solid blocks, so we temporarily gave the rose in that version a cyan hue instead. It wouldn't have made much sense for a cyan coloured flower to give red dye, like the rose did, Instead, we made red mushrooms smeltable into red dye to give players access. This was inconsistent with the PC version, however, so Johan proposed a new crop, the beetroot, which could be crafted into red dye. We also added beetroot soup to give bowls more function. The following update ended up replacing the rose with the poppy and dropping support for the Xperia play, so the beetroot, now ported to PC, is a relic of an old forgotten bug. Although, next time you fight the dragon, try taking some beetroot soup. Its use as a weapon may surprise you. The Wandering Trader. When adding new resources in far-flung biomes, we needed a way to indicate their existence to new players. Our solution was the Wandering Trader, who would offer exotic plants and blocks to pique the player's interest. For those who keep up to date on developments, however, it serves as a temporary distraction and a source of leads and leather. This is actually intended gameplay, as in the Village and Pillage update, we made trades much more generous, but wanted to keep that feeling of frustration. That is why the prices the Wandering Trader offers are so exorbitant. This ignites passion in the player, which encourages creative ways of airing their grievances. Other features seldom do this, so this mob has a unique position in the game experience. And there you go, there's the contents of the new book. What do you think about the design principles and new lore? Feel free to comment below. For everyone else, I should mention that these pages were all made up, though some of them were inspired by developer comments. I hope you all enjoyed this April Fools video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. Special thanks to Yal, Elethris, Salor7, Stonepayman, Soko Arwen, and the Dead Comedian, my YouTube members. And thanks for watching everyone!